Hi guys, this is Ivy from Wompley. I'm here to walk you through how to fill out the Paycheck Protection Program loan form directly on the Cross River website. First things first, when you first click on the application, it's going to take you to a page that looks just like this. And up at the top, you're going to see every single step that I'm going to help you walk through today. First, let's start with step number one. We're going to go with our general business information. This is where you're going to fill out information like your legal business name, your DBA or trade name if that's applicable, business email, business phone number that we can reach you at. Moving right along, we're going to enter in our additional information, like what type of entity type we are. In this particular case, we're going to go ahead and click S Corp, but it is a drop down. Please pick the one that's most applicable to you. Then you're going to enter in your EIN, employer identification number, your business start date, the total number of employees in your business, the state of incorporation slash organization, or where are your headquarters located, and then your NAICS code. If you aren't sure what your NAICS code is or aren't sure where to find it, please go ahead and click directly here. It's going to take you to the website where you can find out that information firsthand. Last but not least, before it takes us on to the following step, we're going to go ahead and go into your business address. This is where you're going to enter in information from your city, to your state, to your zip code. Once you're satisfied with your answers, we're going to go ahead and click Next Step. And it's going to have us fill out our owner information next. So, starting at the top, this is where we're going to enter in our first name and last name. Is this person going to be the primary contact for the application? Yes, they are. This is their email address. This is where you're going to enter in a social security number. It, for the case of this demo, this is a completely random number, percentage of ownership, date of birth, and mobile number, just so that we can verify that this is in fact a real person and that they are associated with this company. It's also going to ask for their home address. Now, if you're one of those businesses that has more than one owner, more than one person who owns more than 20% of the company, this is where you're going to go ahead and click, where it says add owner right here in the blue. This is going to allow you to pre-populate the form all over again so you can enter in all of the information for every person who should be on the loan. Next, we're going to go ahead and click Next Step. It takes about 30 seconds while they validate our business and owner information and make sure that everything we've put into the system is in fact valid and correct to the best of our ability. Once it goes ahead and moves past this step, it's going to take us directly into Step 3 where we're going to answer some preliminary questions and we're able to move on with the application process. Up here at the top of the screen, you're going to see you're on your way. Congratulations. It's also going to have a link. This link will take you back directly into the application process itself. If for some reason you need to stop, take a break, walk away, or if you don't have all the information that you need offhand. Underneath the link, it's going to have your application eligibility questionnaire. It's eight questions. We're going to go through them together. First, is the applicant or any owner of the applicant presently suspended, debarred, or proposed for debarment? In our case, we're going to go ahead and click no. Number two, has the applicant, any owner of the applicant, or any business owned or controlled by any of them ever obtained a direct guaranteed loan from the SBA or any other federal agency that's currently delinquent or defaulted in the last seven years. In this case, we're going to go ahead and click no again. Number three, is the applicant or any owner of the applicant an owner of any other business or have any other common management with any other business as well? In this case, we're going to go ahead and click no. Number four, has the applicant received an SBA economic injury disaster loan between January 31st and April 3rd of this year? In this case, we're going to go ahead and click no again. Number five, is the applicant, if an individual, or any individual owning 20% or more of equity of the applicant, subject to an indictment or criminal information or an arraignment? In this case, we're going to go ahead and click no again. And number six, within the last five years for any felony, has the applicant, if an individual, or any owner of the applicant been convicted, pleaded guilty, or been placed on any kind of a diversion. In our case, go ahead and click no. Number seven, is the United States the principal place of residence for all employees of the applicant included on the applicant's payroll? In this case, I'm going to click yes. And last but not least, is the applicant a franchise that is listed on the SBA's franchise directory? I'm going to go ahead and click no. 
Once you verify that you have in fact clicked every single bubble and that you copied the link at the top of the screen, we're going to go ahead and click the next step button to be able to move on to step four where we start to do our payroll calculations. Now that we've gone ahead and completed steps one, two, and three on the application, we're going to go ahead and move directly into step four, payroll information. This is where we're going to go ahead and use the Paycheck Protection Program Calculator to try to help make the whole process as easy as possible. Underneath that, you're going to see a couple of questions that we're going to help to answer. First, what will this loan be used for? In my case, I went ahead and clicked Payroll, Lease and Mortgage Interest, and Utilities, but please click everything that's applicable to your situation. Underneath that, it says please fill in the amounts based on the results from the PPP calculator. That's actually this right here. What this is going to do is it's actually going to help you fill in the rest of the application. But you do need to make sure that every single piece of information within this form is filled out to the best of your ability. Starting at the top, we need to fill out things like when was the worksheet completed, what's the business name, what's your business EIN, who is the name of the person who's completed the form itself, were you in business for a full year in 2019? Yes. Are you a highly seasonal business? No. Are you excluded business? No. Number of employees as of 215, 250 in our case. Underneath that, that it has a couple of quick disclaimers. Starting with the first one, it states, I understand that in order for the loan to be forgiven, that the business must spend at least 75% of the loan on payroll costs and have the same number of employees as of 6-30-2020 as we had on 2-15-2020. In my case, that's 250 employees. And you cannot reduce employee wages by more than 25%. In this case, you do either have to click yes or no in this box over here on the side. Underneath that is the next disclaimer. It says, I will be required to provide supporting documentation to the loan servicer for the loan to be forgiven, and it will take up to 90 days for the documentation to be processed. Again, it's a quick yes or no off to the side. Underneath that is where we're going to start to fill out the numbers portion. It's all based on your 2019 taxes. The only portions that you have to configure yourself are these boxes over here in the blue. So starting at the top and working our way down, first one. How much money did you spend on salary, wages, commissions, similar compensation, cash tips or equivalent, vacation, family, parental, medical or sick leave, group health insurance, retirement benefits, state and local taxes on employee compensation, payments to independent contractors if necessary, portion of wages in excess of $100,000 a year, or in essence, how much of this amount up here was paid to employees that make over $100,000 a year? How much was it past that point? How much did you pay to the sole proprietor? And what was the outstanding balance of any kind of idle loan that you received between 1-31-2020 and 4-3-2020? Once you fill out these boxes over here, it's automatically going to calculate the average monthly expenses over here on the side to help make the process as smooth as possible. Underneath that, there's going to be a couple more disclaimers. Starting at the top, I confirmed that the data entered is true and accurate and can be supported by 941 forms, tax returns, and other documentation as needed. If I fail to provide these when requested by the lender, my loan will not be approved. You simply have to click yes or no off to the side. Next one, I hereby certify that all data and information entered to support my PPP loan amount is true and correct based on the documentation I do have and hereby submitted with my application. Again, quick yes or no. Next one, I understand that the data being used for an application for a federal loan guaranteed by the Small Business Administration. Any errors, either intentional or not, can result in federal prosecution. Once you go ahead and click yes on all three of these different boxes, it's going to automatically populate these two right here. It's going to take the entire sum of this second column that was automatically calculated for you in your calculated average monthly expenses and put it down here at the bottom. In our case, the qualifying payroll less exclusions is $245,000. Then it goes through a multiplier and this is the maximum total loan amount that we can get for a PPP. Now, we already have the first three answers for the sheet over here on the side. Notice where it says average monthly payroll cost, that's line 52. That's actually this box right here. You'd simply just transfer, transfer that over. 
Underneath that, if you had any kind of an idle loan amount, you'd go ahead and enter that here. And then the total loan request amount is going to be this second box right underneath your qualifying pay less exclusions. Last but not least, before we move on to the next steps, we go into the loan purpose analysis. This actually puts into perspective exactly how much of your loan is going to be forgiven based on how it's allocated. In our case, we're doing roughly about 80% for our payroll. We're doing about 10% for the continuation of health care benefits and insurance premiums, utilities, mortgage payments, rent, refinancing the idle loan, and any interest on debt incurred prior to 2-15-2020. Again, all you have to do is fill out these blue boxes right here and it automatically calculates everything off to the side. Now, once you've officially finished out everything on this side and you finished out the PPP calculator, we're going to go ahead and click next step down here at the bottom in order to move to step five. It takes about 10 seconds for it to verify your information so that it can go ahead and move on to the next step where it's going to have you confirm the business and owner information and e-sign your documentation. So it's going to go through everything that we've already entered in. So what our legal business name is, DBA name, business name, phone number, address, organization type, EIN, business start date, number of employees, state of incorporation, loan purpose, loan purpose notes, average monthly payroll. All of this was completed in steps one, two, and three. It also goes into what your owner information is. If there was more than one owner, all of it will be listed in this section. After that, if you do need to change any of your information, go ahead and click edit. Otherwise, you're going to click please confirm your identity. All you have to do, scroll down, confirm the identity, and then go through the next checklist where it says, I understand that by checking the box below, I'm confirming that. To the best of my knowledge, the business information I provided is accurate, and I have provided all of the owners of the business who own 20% or more of the company, or a single control person with control over the entire entity if different than the owners, or in the event that there isn't a single owner over the threshold. I have confirmed the responses to the eligibility questionnaire were accurate and complete. The information com uh, put into the PPP calculator was accurate per the instructions laid out in the calculator. This business is not an ineligible business as defined by the sections below. OTO Analytics hereby provides its written instructions to Wampley and its affiliates, agents, or third-party service providers to obtain business and or credit reports about OTO Analytics in connection with this application. After that, it goes into a little bit more detail. I hereby provide my written instructions to Wampley under the Fair Credit Reporting Act permitting Wampley, its affiliates, agents, or third-party service providers to obtain one or more consumer reports about me, including any credit reports and or credit score from more of the consumer reporting agencies in connection with this particular business. With this being said, we do not necessarily pull a credit check, but we do verify the authenticity of the business itself. I understand based on the information I provided below, I will need to provide the following documents on the next page. The last six months of bank statements, my driver's license for the person who we're filling this out for, a void check, proof of payroll, it's the IRS form 941, the PPP calculator that we just finished filling out right over here, you're actually going to attach that, and your most recent tax return if possible. Aside from that, it also goes into ineligible businesses. So it goes through every single one of those, like businesses engaged in lending, passive businesses, scrolling down a little bit, life insurance companies, businesses located in foreign companies, etc. If you feel like there might be a confusion about ineligible businesses, it's most likely detailed here, or you can absolutely reach out directly to us so we can avoid some confusion. Last but not least, you go ahead and press I confirm and agree to all of the statements above and click submit e-sign. Typically it takes about 10 seconds and it says congratulations you've almost submitted your loan application for the SBA Paycheck Protection Program. The good news is we've already submitted your application to the SBA to reserve your spot based on the information you provided earlier so there's no need to rush. Again if you need to return later go ahead and hold on to this link just like we did on step three and then it's going to allow you to be able to upload all of your information. It gives you individual sections to be able to upload all of your documents. So bank statements, you're going to click right here, upload your bank statements into that section. Required documents, and it details them below. Driver's license for Ali Altman in this case, void check, proof of payroll, what that PPP calculator is going to look like, and your most 
recent tax return. As soon as that's completed and that's finished, we're going to go ahead and click next step and then your application is officially completed and good to go. If you have any questions, as always, please feel free to reach out to us directly. Our information is actually located in the upper right hand corner of the application where it says questions or need assistance. We're always happy to help.